So welcome to part two. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the examples that were not covered in class. And this will start with 24 and we'll work to the end of the assignment. So again, the, the first step is to set the equation equal to zero and so that we can use the zero product property. So I'll be subtracting six from both sides and this will enable me to have zero on this side. Now the next step would be for us to end up factoring out the greatest common factor as we did in those last examples in part one of this video. But part two is going to cover the situation where we have no greatest common factor. So let's actually finish simplifying the left side now because when we look at this we don't have a greatest common factor anymore. There's no common factor. 7 is a prime number and 43 is not a multiple of 7 and 6 is not a multiple of 7 either and none of these numbers have any common factors that we can get rid of. So in this case <clears throat> we, we need to just factor it and we'll need to use the magic X method to solve this and so cases like this are slightly more challenging because when we get to our factoring step we have to think a little bit more carefully about our answers and what we get here. So we'll set up the magic X. All right, This would be a good thing for you to check your understanding right now. So we have AC and they have to multiply up to that and they have to add up to this thing right here. And so the idea would be that they have to multiply up to AC. And so A in this case is 7 and C is 6. And 7 times 6 makes 42. And in this case we need two values that would have a sum of negative 43. And in this case we can kind of see that we're going to be done pretty quickly because again when this number is positive we're looking for two numbers that add up to 43 basically and we can see when we start our list we got 1 times 42 makes 42 and in this case those have a sum of 43 so as I said in our first step usually I would have you guys put the variable into both places and we would then figure out what the signs would be and in this case we should see that they're both negative because they have to have a product that is positive but a sum that's negative and so that's when we know that we'll have two negatives in this case. So we have a minus and a minus. So now we will put our two numbers in there, right? We have negative 1 and negative 42. And what we learned about these is that in cases like this, we have to divide by the leading coefficient, okay? And our leading coefficient, again, is 7. So we'll be dividing both of these by 7. Now we can see that this expression cannot be simplified, but we should be able to see that negative 42 over 7 can be simplified. So we have negative 7, uh, sorry, negative 6 over 1 if we divided that. And so in this case, we need to recognize that the denominator gives us the coefficient of the variable and the numerator, right, the number up here, still goes in the same place that it did before when we did our work on the previous examples, right? So here we have our minus 6 and in this case the 7 represents the coefficient of the variable that has the expression with the negative 1. Okay, so the negative 1 and the 7 those go together in this expression right here and likewise we have a 1 down here okay and so that would be our coefficient of 1 in the parentheses that has the negative 6. So this is something that you got to get used to solving the magic x to get these and now we have two equations to finish up the process. So again our first step we set the equation equal to 0. That was this step right here. Then we recognized that there was no greatest common factor. So we would at least try but in this case we can see there is no common factor. So we have to skip over that step and then we factor the polynomial 
and we see that at this step we were able to factor that using the magic x and of course we had to finish by dividing by our leading coefficient so right now we're going to get this expression 7p minus 1 equals 0 and we set up both of these p minus 6 equals 0 and now when we do our work we need to ensure that we solve both equations. This one on the left is not too difficult to solve, so I'm going to move all this work up a little bit to save some space. And we'll see right now that it's pretty similar to the last examples, right? In this case, we add 6 to both sides, and so we get p equals positive 6. So that way, is not too different. But this one on the left, this expression over here, is going to be tougher to deal with, right? It's a two-step equation, which isn't that much harder, but it is a little added level of difficulty. So here we have now 7p equals positive 1. And now what we would want to do is divide both sides by 7. And so when we, when we divide both sides by 7, um, we did that so that we would be able to eliminate this coefficient of 7, right? So those would cancel each other out, and now we're left with the idea that p is equal to 1 7. So we see that we got an answer finally that was a fraction. Okay, so I've been trying to explain to everybody that these problems get a little more tricky, and so if I could get a little bit more space, I would put the final, final answer. And I just feel like we need a little bit more room. And that's why I told my students, um, it might be a good idea to do some of these on a notebook paper, depending on how big you write, because you might need more space. Okay, so we see that P equals 1 7 or P equals 6. So we have two separate solutions for this problem. So... These are the ones that we want to focus our attention on. These are the most difficult ones. And again, they just take a little extra thinking. We want to use these same steps that we used in the last video, right? Set the equation equal to zero. Consider factoring out the common factor. If there is no common factor, then you'll have to switch over that step and just skip it, okay? And then factor the polynomial. That'd be number three. And so in that case, we use the magic X, right? And then we set both of those factors equal to zero, and then we solve both equations. So we have to keep our head together. The more practice that you get, the easier this should feel. So we'll try number 25. And in this case, we see that our equation is not set equal to zero. So I want this right side to be equal to zero. So in that case, we're going to take 7 from both sides. So I know 7 minus 7 is 0, so that's why we have 0 here. But I also have to fix the left side of the equation. So here we have 2n squared minus 3n. And negative 13 minus 7 would give us negative 20. And so we can see right now that you know 20 is a, fa a multiple of 2. But 3 is not a multiple of 2. And because of that, we are not going to multiply. We're not going to factor out a 3. I'm sorry, a 2. We can't factor out a 2 because of this 3. Okay? So all of these terms do not have a common factor. And that's what we mean by common factor is that it would be all of them. Not just these two, but this one also in the middle. That negative 3. And so now what we have to do is finish this up we will now jump over the common factor step and we're going to just have to factor this. So we have these two equations equal to zero and we have our two blank parentheses, okay? And in these cases where you can't factor out a number, we're gonna have to leave a little bit of extra space here because we need to realize that there's going to be a number that goes there, okay? One of these is gonna have to have a coefficient of two so that when we multiply this out, we would actually end up with two n squared. So the next thing we should do, of course, is think about the signs. And because they multiply up to a negative, that tells us that one of these is going to be a positive and one is going to be a negative. So in this case, I'm going to leave extra space in both of them. And the reason why I'm doing that 
is because we actually don't know at this point right now and what we've been thinking about, we don't have, we don't necessarily know that the two is going to go in this place or in this place, all right? We're not sure yet. So we'll leave a little bit of extra space and we have the plus and the negative and we'll go ahead and set up our magic X and again to check for understanding you should try to figure out what AC would be. Again they have to have a product of AC and they have to have a sum of B and so in this case I see that we have 2 is our A, right? B is negative 3 and C is negative 20 and so 2 times negative 20 is negative 40. B would be negative 3. So the big idea here is for us to finally figure out which one has the coefficient and which number goes in which space. So when we have a negative value here, like I've been trying to get you guys to build that into your intuition, when we have a negative that is our product, right? When AC is negative, we're going to be looking for two numbers that are three units apart to help us get out of the list step. So we look at our list of numbers that would make negative 40. And we have 1 times 40. And 2 times 20. And 3 times, well, nothing, right? 4 times 10. We just keep going down the list. Okay, and when we get to 5 times 8, we can see that these are three units apart. And so we found our pair of numbers finally, right? So we have a 5 here, and we have an 8 here. And now we want to figure out which one would be negative and which one would be positive. And because they have to have a sum that's negative, that tells me that the 8 would be the negative, right? The bigger number should be negative in this case. So we add the negative to the 8. And now we can't forget that we have to divide by our leading coefficient. So we need to divide both of these by 2. And so this number, 5 over 2, cannot be simplified. So that one would stay how it is. This other one, though, we can break this down. And this is going to be equal to negative 4 over 1. And so at this step, we can now see what goes in which place, right? This negative 4 right here should go there. And because we see a 1 underneath it, that coefficient of 1 is going to go in the same parentheses with the 4. Okay, and now our 5 and our 2 go together. So again, the 5 is positive, and that goes in this place. And this 2, this denominator of 2, shows us the coefficient in that parentheses for the variable. So we have 2n plus 5 and 1n plus 4. Uh, sorry, 1n minus 4. And so now we want to set both of these equal to 0 to finish our work, right? So 2n plus 5 equals 0, and then we write or n minus 4 equals 0. Okay, on this side, we realize that we have to add 4 to both sides, and then that gives us n equals 4. And so that was only a one-step equation, so that was not too difficult, but in this case, we have a two-step equation. We have to take the 5 from both sides first, and then we see that we have 2n equals negative 5, and then now we would want to divide both sides by 2, and we're dividing both sides by 2 so that we can cancel out this 2, and we have the n by itself. So now... We would have n equals negative 5 over 2, or n equals positive 4. So again, you want to get all of the solutions, so you don't want to stop until you have every single step complete, and then you actually have your two solutions. So, <clears throat> as I said, these are the more difficult problems on this uh, last assignment. So... Before I start this next problem, you might want to check for understanding and see if you understand how to do 26 on your own. But 
If not, you can follow along and at some point when you realize what you're doing, try to take over the process and, you know, take it from there. So again, the first step is to set this equal to zero. So I'm hoping that, you know, if you look at that list of steps and write that in your notebook, it should help you try to keep yourself focused on how to solve these problems, right? So we'll do 2x squared plus 7x minus 49, right? Because negative 47 minus 2 is negative 49. And then we'll look for a common factor, but in this case, um, neither of these numbers are even. So they're not multiples of 2. So that means that I can't, I can't factor anything out, right? So we see that there's no common factor between these terms, right? 2 is not a factor of 7 or 49. So that tells us that we're going to have to move on to the step of factoring and the leading coefficient is not something that we can get rid of. So we set up our two blank parentheses, we'll put x and x, and then we'll realize, look, we have a negative here, and because of that we know we have to have a positive and negative, and that's why I've been trying to say that we got to be strategic, right? When we see that we have a leading coefficient, we're going to have to leave a little bit of extra space in between the, the beginning of the parentheses and our variable because we're going to need that place, okay? And then we know one of these will be positive and one of them will be negative. And we'll have to figure out which number goes in which place now. So we set up our magic x. We have ac. They have to multiply up to ac. And they have to add up to b. All right? AC, in this case, we're going to have to do 2 times 49. And 2 times 49 gives us, well, that's a negative 49, so we should have negative 98. So don't forget to think about the sign there. And then they have to add up to 7, okay? So we'll look through all the factors of 98, and we're going to wait until we get two that are 7 units apart. And so let's go down our list, all right? We know that 1 times 98 makes 98, but those aren't 7 units apart, so we just keep going. We know we have 2 times 49, because that's how we got in this situation, okay? Then we could try 3 times, well, 3 times nothing, because this is not divisible by 3, right? We know 3 times 33 is 99, so that's not going to work, and we can't divide it by 4, because once we cut it in half, it's already an odd number. So we can't divide it by 5 because it doesn't end in a 5 or a 0. We can't divide it by 6 because we can't divide it by 3. And so can we divide it by 7? And if we tried, we would be able to think that this is 7 times 14, right? 7 times 10 is 70, and 7 times 4 is 28, and 28 plus 70 is 98. And these numbers are 7 units apart. So we have our 7, we have our 14, and so we'd have to figure out which one is the positive and which is the negative. And in this case, we see that we have a sum that's positive. And because this number is positive, I know that would mean that the bigger number must be positive and the smaller number must be negative. And we will divide both of these by the leading coefficient, which is 2. So this one cannot be simplified. But 14 can be simplified into 7 over 1. So we go put the values in the places where they go. I would put the negative 7 here with the minus, and the 2 would be the coefficient that goes there. And so that's how we use this fraction. And now this one over here that we reduced would give us the positive 7 that goes there and a positive 1 right here. So now... We follow the step where we set both of these equal to zero and we get both solutions that we need to solve it. So in this case, we would subtract seven from both sides and we get x equals negative seven. In this case, we'll add seven to both sides and then we'll get two x equals positive seven. I'll have to divide both sides by two. And so we cancel out those twos, and we get x equals positive 7 halves. And so we have our two answers, right? We have x equals negative 7, or x equals 7 halves. So I would highly recommend 
practicing the next example, following all these steps, and understanding that I kind of set up this part of the worksheet so that there would not be a greatest common factor. And you'll see that we're going to start ending up with uh, solutions that uh, have uh, irreducible fractions in it. So in this example that we're doing here, we would like to set it equal to zero to start off. So we'll take three from both sides, and we'll have this equation set equal to zero. So then we'll have 4r squared plus 3r minus 7 now. And in this case, we see that there's no greatest common factor again, right? 4 is 2 times 2, and neither of these are even. So we're going to have to just move on. If we're you back. guys... Okay. And so this question specifically, we'll have to just factor without factoring anything out, right? So we'll have two parentheses here. Hello, Castro. Hello, everybody. Goodbye, Castro. How you doing? So, we need to set up our magic x now so that we can solve this equation. So, ac, they have to have a product of a times c, and in this case we'll have 4 times negative 7, and that would make negative 28. And they'll have to have a sum of positive 3, so that's our b. So, at this... So... In this case, we will look through the factors of 28. We'll find 4 and 7. And so 4 and 7 are 3 units apart, right? So we should figure out which one's positive and which one's negative. And we know that... And so we know that the negative is going to be the smaller one because we're going to end up with a positive value. So we should already have... We should already have the R and the R in this case, and we know one will be positive and one will be negative. And so now what we have to do is divide both of these by our leading coefficient, which is 4. And so this one is irreducible, but this one on the right, we could lower that one into negative 1 over 1. So the negative one will go in this place, and we'll have a 1R right there. And lastly, we would have the positive 7 go here with the 4. And so now all we have to do is set both of these equations equal to 0 and then solve them so that we can finish up this problem. So let's finish it up. All right, we're almost there. We add 1 to both sides and we get R equals positive 1. In this case, I need to take 7 from both sides. And so we get 4R equals negative 7. I would then divide both sides by 4, cancel out the 4s, and we would have that r equals negative 7 over 4, or r equals 1. Okay, so I'm going to leave 28 for you guys to do on your own. That would be, I think, the last problem on this assignment. So good luck studying for your homework. I'm going to upload this to YouTube right now. Uh, don't mind the people in the background. Lunch kind of, I went into overtime a little bit, all right? So... Uh, have fun studying, yeah?